Good morning, this is Pastor David, Devo- David Charlton. This is my daily devotion on March the 27th, Friday at 11 a.m. I want to thank you for being with me again. And as we've been doing all this week, we're following Luther's pattern of daily prayer as found in the small catechism. We begin in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And then we confess the faith in which we were baptized. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. And then we say the Lord's Prayer. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. The song that I've chosen today is an invocation of the Holy Spirit, which is also not a bad way to start your time of prayer and to start your day. It is the old hymn, Breathe on Me, Breath of God. Breathe on me, breath of God. Fill me with life anew, that I may love all that you love and do what you would do. Breathe on me, breath of God. Until my heart is pure, until we do, I will, one will, to do and to endure. Breathe on me, breath of God, so shall I never die, but live with you the perfect life of your eternity. The reading for today comes from Ezekiel. Now you, mortal, say to the house of Israel, Thus you have said, Our transgressions and our sins weigh upon us, and we waste away because of them. How can we live? Say to them, As I live, says the Lord God, I have no pleasure in the death of the wicked, but that the wicked turn from their ways and live. Turn back, turn back from your evil ways, for why will you die, O house of Israel? And you, mortal, say to your people, the righteousness of the righteous shall not save them when they transgress. And as for the wickedness of the wicked, it shall not make them stumble when they turn from their wickedness. And the righteous shall not be able to live by their righteousness when they sin. Though I say to the righteous that they shall surely live, yet if they trust in their righteousness and commit iniquity, none of their righteous deeds shall be remembered, but in the iniquity that they have committed they shall die. Again, though I say to the wicked, you shall surely die. Yet if they turn from their sin and do what is lawful and right, if the wicked restore the pledge, Give back what they have taken by robbery and walk in the statutes of life, committing no iniquity. They shall surely live. They shall not die. None of the sins that they have committed shall be remembered against them. They have done what is lawful and right. They shall surely live. We're approaching the fifth week and final week of Lent. Soon we will be in Holy Week, and then we will remember the death of our Lord on the cross and celebrate his resurrection on Easter. As we get near to the end of Lent, our lesson from Ezekiel 
reminds us what this season is all about. To answer that question, we need to clear away two false conceptions of God. The first is that God is an angry judge, keeping track of our sins, eagerly planning to punish us for all of them. This is a false picture of God. As God says in Ezekiel, As I live, says the Lord God, I have no pleasure in the death of the wicked, but that the wicked turn from their ways and live. God is not eagerly keeping score, looking forward to the day of our punishment. The other false image is of God as a coach with a whistle and a watch, waiting to see if we can make the grade and qualify for heaven. If we only train hard enough, we can make the cut. That's not a true picture of God either. God says, Though I say to the righteous they shall surely live, yet if they trust in their righteousness and commit iniquity, none of their righteous deeds shall be remembered. Thinking that we can be righteous enough to earn God's favor is also a false picture of God. God neither wants to punish those who sin nor reward those who trust in their own righteousness. He desires instead to have mercy on those who turn back to him. Both our wickedness and our self-righteousness take us away from God. What does God want from us? The answer is found in the first commandment. I am the Lord your God. You shall have no other gods. God wants to be our God, which means to have mercy on us. The wicked finds too much pleasure in his own wickedness, and that becomes his God. The righteous takes too much pride in his own righteousness, and that becomes his God. God wants us to turn from our false gods and let him be our merciful God. That's what God wants from us, to turn back to him from our false gods, our false gods of self, and let him be our God. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we repent of the two false pictures we have of you as an angry judge who eagerly desires to punish every little deed and every little sin we've ever committed. Thinking that you're that way, we turn away and we say, what's the point? And we go after pleasure and power. Or we think of you as a God who is measuring us to see whether we can measure up, whether we can make the cut. And so we watch ourselves and every day we say, I'm doing better, I'm doing better. Instead, God, you want to be our God. You want to have mercy on us. You want us to trust in you for our salvation. God, help us turn back to you, to come to you humble, repentant, seeking your mercy, seeking your promised blessing, and giving that to us, God, Help us to turn away from the God of self and to serve you and to serve others. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you for being with me today and I'll see you tomorrow.